miles somewhere in between. You know, if you've got somebody that's 62 inches and 63 inches and you're measuring them to the exactness, to, to, to an exact value, you're going to find out that there's a, any number of values in between two. All right, anybody come up with anything yet? I'd like to be able to work on some stuff with calculation because I know that not everybody's got all this mastered. Just trying to see if anybody new came in. I mean, how are y'all doing on the homework? I mean, y'all got it all done. I didn't look this today, but um, I noticed the people were more or less up with the due dates. I just remember there are two different types of means, but both of them are calculated the exact same way. One is just called that Greek symbol mu. It looks like a U with a long tail. That's pronounced U. And that's going to be important because, like I said, often, most all the time, especially in chapters um, 7 and 8, and um, we're trying to find out what that value is by using the sample mean but both calculations are done exactly the same way it's just that they got a different name for each one I mean a different symbol for each one sample um, sample standard deviation it's uh, n minus one is your divide before you take the square root and then the population is it's divided by n now did anybody run across uh, this and this is one of the things get reminded of about uh, somebody brought up the um, if you use the calculator, you remember we stayed over I stayed over and showed you how to put things in, and then you get all of the calculations in chapter three on two pages. It's just um, the one thing they don't give you that the course that some of the questions asked for is the variance. Did anybody run across that and figure out how to deal with it? So how did you deal with it when you found when they wanted the variance and it's not on the calculator? All right. Let's help if I make that bigger. Yeah, and that's that's smart, okay? Because yeah, they don't give it to you, and again, it's a TI calculator. It's not a calculator designed by the people that wrote the book. And in my experience, the variance has very limited usage. But if you know the standard deviation, then you just square the value. Just you got to remember to go beyond um, what you um, need to do. So what you could do is, like on this one, remember also S of X is the sample standard deviation. The one after that, Sigma X, is the population standard deviation. Well, but okay. You're talking about something that's a little bit different, though. You're talking about the procedure, Carolyn, and that's that's true. But what I'm saying is, on this page right here, they show us the x bar, which is the mean. And this wouldn't wouldn't matter whether this was the uh, population mean or the um, sample mean. 
they use the X bar, which is a symbol for the pop, the sample mean, but in both cases, sample or population, it would be 3.84114364364. All right, those next two, I don't know why we would need those. You could possibly use those in chapter 11, so I don't know why they're on there. Now, the next one is the SX is the sample standard deviation. So if we wanted the population standard deviation, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let me turn on my light. Uh, that, but you're right, Carolyn, that's the procedure for the, um, for the sample variance slash standard deviation. All right, so let me kind of go back. Okay, so um, you got to watch um, in statistics. One of the things you have to be careful about is the rounding. For example, if they say round off to, to at least two digits, which I think is mostly what they said, I would. Uh, you really need to go a few past that. Okay. Because you can't get accuracy back and in case you've never seen this little town like I said is um, this means square that little carrot oops did I miss something is that supposed to be a decimal there we go So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type it back into the calculator. And like I said, I'm going a little bit past that because if it said a round off to um, two decimal places, don't round off until the very end because once you round off any of your intermediate values, you're going to lose that accuracy. So I'm going to, uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's just do it back on that calculator again. So, um, clear that out. And I took a picture of it. Oops. And then, uh, which one is the square? So then that would be your variance. And then you can round it off to whatever they ask for. Does that make sense? So that's the, the sample variance. And like I said, the other one, the sigma square, is the, is the last one on that first page. And I, I can't put a sigma in here that I know of, so, but it's that little kicked over six looking thing. Because that's the standard deviation, but it's the population standard deviation. So, um, 
I'll show you back on the calculator. You can do that there too. I took a picture of them so we can type them in. Because that to me again, that's the drawback of a calculator is so the sigma, which was the standard deviation of the population. And this one uh, was exact up to that. So then there would be your population variance, okay? I think for the most part, you're going to be working with um, sample ones. All right, have I stirred up anything like, inside of your brains yet? Um, these t the tests that, uh, you know, your four chapter tests are the ones in Canvas. And uh, this is my first time really dealing with this. I did because I, I was on the, had to proofread the exam during the summer. And uh, I found that you can do an awful lot of things that I didn't think was possible. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, Tracy. You mean, where was I getting the, uh, to figure out the variance? All right, I'm, I, since I've already uh, based on that calculator, let's go back to uh, one of the screen printouts in the calculator. All right, let me go back and show you what I was doing with the, because uh, it's on the PowerPoint. Because I already I cleared it out, so I don't know if I can get it back. But what I'm just trying to find out is if you can, um, is that um, we're trying to show you is that on the calculator, there is no value for the variance. I'll show you again in a second here once I find it. So the sample variance or the population variance, they're both decided the same way. It's just the square of the standard deviation. All right. So where is that at? So no matter which one it is, the only thing that's different is that second to last step where you divide by N minus one for the sample or N. So uh, for both, and for both to finish out, we went through these in class to finish out the um, standard deviation for either the population of the sample, you just take the square root. So what I was showing you is we're going backwards. So let me find it. Or let's find a good one. This one's like small. I just saw it. Where did it go? There was a big one somewhere. All right. So let's kind of make this big. So this is what I showed you on that calculator. All right. It was just one for, it was one for data. I don't know what happened to it. Screw data. When I blew it up, it just like went crazy. All right, let me find it again. 
the reason why I was trying to use this other one is because it actually had them labeled. Where did it go? Where did it go? Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is what I was showing you originally on that calculator. That's page one. So when you put in your data column, array or whatever they call it, I think in here they call it a list on on um, TI. Well, the first page is the mean, skip to, and then the next two are the standard deviations, the sample standard deviation and the population standard deviation. So what I was trying to get across was I had asked, um, who was it? I can't remember who had answered it. Yeah, Tracy, you had answered it about um, squaring it. So you must have done this if, if you knew that. But they don't give you the variance on here. So what you got to do is take that value, either the, and it's usually it's the sample standard deviation, which is the first one, the one that's labeled in pink. And you need to square that. And uh, that'll give you your variance. And you got to be careful to go beyond the number of decimal places you need to round off to. Because as an example, I think, uh, as I remember one that I did yesterday, the, the instructions were round off to at least two decimal places. Well, you don't round off until the very end, until you're finished. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to go over it, because I know it trips up people. All right, any questions about that? Because like I said, is, um, if you got anything else you want me to jump on, I mean, I'm glad to it. I'm just going over stuff that uh, I kind of think is perfect. But if you want to see, uh, see a standard deviation, we can go through one. You know, we can. Well, OK. You're talking about um, if you're calculating the standard deviation, the variance slash standard deviation by hand, as I said, is there's plenty of places to make mistakes. So what I, I suggest doing is in that uh, when you get to the deviations, when you subtract the mean from every one of the data values, you can check at that point. If everything adds up to zero, then you... Um, know you're right up to that point. You got one you want to look at? Are you doing them by hand, Tracy? Or are you, I mean, I'm sorry, Anne Marie, you then, are you doing them by hand or are you trying to use the calculator? Well, then that's good. Um, it's good to be able to do both because you can check one against the other. Um, because here's the thing is, with that calculator, if you miss enter a value, then it's going to not, you got, you got to have some way to make sure you did it right. So that's one of the things you, you should be able to do it by hand. Now, if you got more than five or six values, it gets very difficult to do it by hand, though. I mean, um, one other thing that I suggest, especially for this, and I'll show you, I can't remember if I didn't show you all of this, but uh, this is real easy to do if you want to do it, because you don't have to worry about that lockdown on this first test here but uh i know one of y'all at least said that you like to use an excel so let me uh
So this was some data that I took, and I think what this was was in 3.3 where they asked you to do the 12 number summary. So what I did is I went through all of the calculations that um, that the that the calculator does, and uh, these are just labels here, just so I can show you. But uh, this problem, as I remember, it was talking specifically about a sample. Well. Yeah, because you can download that data, um, and that's a good thing. And then that way you don't have to worry about whether you copied it correctly. Because invariably, if I use it to put in a calculator and put in, you know, thirty or fifty values, you know, I'm invariably going to make a mistake. So if you've got it into uh, in a spreadsheet, you can go down through there and look. I got thirty values, and see, and I can see each one of them. So in uh, in uh, Excel or Google Sheets, they both do the same thing. Anytime you want to calculate something you, with a, essentially a formula, you put an equal sign there. And now what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is type in, st start to type in the ST, and you'll notice that you'll get a bunch of them pop up. And the one you want to use, oops, is the one that says sample. All right, and then once you do that, um, hit the tab and opens up uh, parentheses. You can come over here and select all the data, and voila, then you can do that. Same thing with the variance. They have the same one. It's just var.s, but remember, you can also do the variance. So if I do that, see, I can just take this, and you know, see, they're both the same. Just a, a word of caution <laughs> on Excel and also uh, Google Sheets. There is no mean function. It's called average, I guess, because most people are usually um, referring to that as the average. But all three of these are essentially averages. I think there's actually three different means as well. There's the um, what we call the arithmetic mean, which is this one. There's a geometric mean, and I think there's another one. But And then for median, uh, see, there's actually a function called median. For mode, there's actually one called mode. Now, what happened? All right, so what else I was going to say is, um, you know, on the calculator, I wanted to bring this, mention this again. So after you've got, uh, let me go back and just do show you the calculator thing again, just to show you in case you haven't figured this out. I wish there was a way I could make this bigger, but it looks big to me, but they make it smaller to fit in the window. And remember, you can also put this on uh, 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 Android phone. I'm, somebody told me that they had one for Mac, but again, I don't know anything about Macs. So once you get your data in there, you do the calc and you do varsidats, and this data is still in there. See, there's the first page. Well, uh, Well, let me, I mean, it, with 
was it because some, the data wasn't in there correctly, or was it not uh, necessarily doing it, um, giving it the same value? The median should be pretty much universal. But one of the things that I do know, and I think even the book mentions it, is that uh, um, the quarter, the Q1, and the Q3 may, might be different. I'm not sure why they said that, but. Lose who? Me? Oh, no, I just was picking up something. I'm back. Well, like I said, is if you download the data, um, there shouldn't be an issue. But, I mean, I can't think of what would happen with me. But anyway, just to look at the calculator. All right, remember, the first page is the mean and the two standard deviations, the sample and the, and the uh, population. So if you hit the down key, in other words, this little toggle looking thing in the middle, so you can keep going down. And uh, you've got the five number summary there. You've got the min, you've got the Q1, you've got the median and Q3, and they also give you your max. Use whatever decimal that came up and then reduce the decimal. Well, you have to show me what you're talking about. I mean, if it was a matter of rounding off or something. One of the good things about Excel, and one thing, reason I also like, uh, I actually like this better, the way it works in Google Sheets. Um, let me just kind of show you this. This is why I'd almost rather use Google Sheets than... Uh, but you can have it rounded off for you. Um, let's see if I can sh show you this. Where there's on the calculator, you've got to round whatever you want because it doesn't. Uh, well, if you want to send that link to it, like for the, through the email, like the ask your teacher thing, I can, I can go through it with you if you need help. But I was going to show you this. Just to show you, there's always different ways to skin things. And so uh, what's good, this is Google Sheets and I like it because it's consistent throughout. I mean, I, I just don't like Microsoft stuff, the office stuff because especially last week after I had that problem when I moved to a different computer, the PowerPoints look different. And the only thing I can think is because I was using a new version to edit them, when I went back to the old version uh, that wasn't nearly as new, then it uh, didn't show things. But anyway, up here, up at the top, see these two things? This is what you can need. Because if you put your like highlight, just select on any of these, you can uh, get the accuracy whatever you want and have it rounded off for you do that. So that's kind of like, I like that aspect. It works. You, you can do it with Excel. It's just called format. Well, like I said, is I can't, I don't think I can get anything from there anyway, because um, it's got to be delineated and all that. And if it's in that text thing, it may not have that, but, uh, this is kind of neat that I like about Google Sheets. Oh, they do. I know that they have. They could do it if you were, if they format it, but they must have got wise. What's it called in the uh, in Excel? What tab is it under? Home. You know, I know they all uh, do the same things usually because once somebody has a good idea, you know, the other one will steal it, start using it. Number tab. Under home. Yeah, I see. 
Oh, okay, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, and that's usually what happens when you when you right click and do format. Yeah, yeah, you're right. All right, has anybody got anything you want me to to work on? Like I said, is I'm gonna go back to what I was just showing you, but I really want to um, see what y'all got questions about. When you say another population problem, what do you mean? Yeah, I mean, that's really best. Go to the homework and then send it to me with Ask the Teacher. And then um, just let me know it's there and I'll go get it and put it and bring it up. All right. Okay. Yeah. Core teals. Okay. All right. So this right here would be the five number summary. The median is just the median, which is this is this is uh, Q two. I tell you what. Let me. Uh, So this is Q2, which is the median. And that is just uh, finding the median is just not new here, but it's just, that is what Q2 is. All right, so Q1. It doesn't matter. I just told you uh, on that um, that what you need to know thing. Make sure you can do it on a large data set. So you, you can use either one. Just got to be careful. Like I said, with uh, with the calculator, you know, uh, if you're in a rush, it might be hard to make. You got to make sure, double check that everything's put in right. All right, because it's not going to be uh, the ones you're going to have to work with are large. Like I said, over thirty. All right, so Q1 on Excel. Okay, everything, as I said, in Excel or even Google Sheets, you put an equal sign. And what do you think you're going to call this? Well, if you, there's only four functions that have that that start with a Q, and they're all quartiles. Now, uh, I'm not sure what's the difference between Those first two, let's see. Well, in let's see, quartile exclusive. So inclusive. Let's see here. So there's one uh, Excel. Uh, the one I always use is the one that just says quartile. But uh, there's two in here. Let's just do both of them. So quartile, and again, this is going to select the date. This is the inclusive. So uh, now what you got to do is you got to tell it which quartile you want. So when you, um, I don't know why you can't see that little thing. Oh, you know what? You're looking at that. That's the X. That's the what you call it sheet. I'm sorry. That's the um, Google Sheets. Either both of them work the same way. All right. So that, so let's just put the uh, the Excel. But they do the same thing. And I think they have the exact same functions. All right. So, um, as I said, you got all these functions. I showed you about the standard deviation, the variance. So let's look at the quartile things. Now, you can see what pops up. When you put in quartile, 
you just go ahead and select the data just like you do for everything else. But you got to put a comma and you put which one you want. Since we want Q1, you put a one there, 14.75. Now I'm going to try it again and see if um, if it, what the difference between internal and X is. And I'm also, also, also try it by hand. So there are 22, and we can see which one to use. So there are 30 values. So um, n is equal to 30. So to find Q1 by hand, or by the method the book shows you, is equal to 30 times 0.25. That's the matter. Oh, that's right. They don't use parentheses. They use. Hold on a second. Oh, okay. So then um, Q1 is in the eighth position. Okay, so 14. So it looks like the one we want to use is the one that's um, .exe. Let me just kind of look at do the other one. Because like I said, there's four of them. I mean, three of them. I want to make sure we, uh, I'll tell you which one to use. So use the one that's dot, um, exe see that exclusive because then that works out the way that we do it as a book so use that dot exe in excel and i'm pretty sure it's the same thing in google okay so now uh q3 it's very similar. Quartillo, and like I said, he has used that one that's .exe, and then that matches the book. And then I got to put a comma three, and so 48.25. So let me just do it by hand and make sure. So 23rd position. Well, it's just a little bit different. I can't figure it out. Now, here's the good news. Uh, yeah, you can use Excel. Spreadsheet, use whatever you want. On this first task, there's no... Uh, the good thing about the, the Q1 and the Q2 and all that is no matter how much you... If there might be a little bit of difference... It doesn't really matter because you're using them to find outliers. So that little bit doesn't matter. Let me just see something here a bit. Try something else. Well, like I said, it's keeping. Like, you don't have to use Excel. Like I said, you can use the calculator. Just me, make sure you can put everything in. 
I don't know. Well, but that's how you do it. There's a quartile function. What do you mean if it's external? The external thing you talk about in the in, in the Excel that term, that doesn't have anything to do with outliers. That's just telling you, you know, what the um that function name. Like I said, is I'm not 100 percent sure what it does, but um, the difference between the external and the internal. That's why I don't use them. I just use the one that just says plain old quartile. So uh, that's not going to change uh, outliers because you're going to just use the difference between Q1 and Q3 time 1.5 and then add and subtract that. All right, this problem here, we can go through this one by hand, probably the best thing. Like I said, is if you want to get do it on the calculator, like I said, it is, it's going to be pretty easy. But uh, all right, did you find a problem specifically? Okay, let's see it. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it by hand, and then uh, we'll see how the calculator handles it, too. Except we can also put it in the, cal I mean, the calculator or Excel, one or the other. Well, I said this, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with doing it by hand. I mean, I admire somebody that does that. It's just that if you've got a large one, then it's going to take you some time. All right, so... Let me write these on the board. So uh, 15, 6, 19. So it does say population, doesn't it? Okay. So let's write that up here. Say, so, well, let me copy up that fifteen six. Nineteen. Twenty-five. All right. So since it's small, it's pretty easy to do by hand, like I said it is. If you got a large one. Yeah, you know, you're going to have to have plenty of time to do it. So um, I would get either with Excel or your calculator. All right. And what I like to do is, I told you this, is have a little table. All right. So what this will be is X. And I'm just going to write them here. Uh, it's not 16, it's 6. All right. Now, the first thing we need to have is the mean. I'm going to do it to the side because... I'm assuming everybody in here knows how to do the mean. If you don't, then you can, I'll be glad to uh, show you. I'm just going to do it for this. I'm going to take advantage of the um, calculator to calculate the mean. I'm going to add all these up.
Okay, so y'all check me now. So these all add up to 81. This is population, it's mu. Since this is yours, uh, Anne Marie, is that right? 13.5? Let's double check. Yeah, I, if I could avoid it, I would, wouldn't use a calculator. But, you know, you got to have some way to do the larger ones. So some people are fine doing that. You just got to double check the values, putting them in. Every time I use the calculator, I always have to go back and uh, and just double check because I forget how to do everything. All right. Fifteen, six, nineteen, five, twenty-five, and twenty-one. Let me do it again. Fifteen, six, nineteen. You see how tedious it can be. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so um, I was hoping this would, I was hoping this was going to be a nice, easy one, but it looks like I got that number wrong and it's not that. I was ho hoping for a, a whole number. So see how this could easily turn into a nightmare? You got to double check everything. All right. Yeah. Okay. That's why I said I wanted to double check it. You got it. All right. So now. I'm going to write the whole thing out. 15 minus 15.167. And like I said, I'm going a little bit beyond because I think it was talking about two decimal places. Well, that's what I'm saying is I got the 13.5 the first time I did it. And then I don't know what I did. I must have input one number wrong. So I went back and checked, double checked it, and it found out that I had done something wrong. So it's, it's the calculator is not the issue. It's the error process in input.
So, oops. So I'm going to just, I'm showing you the whole process. So I'm going to subtract that mean from every one of these. Yeah, I think I guess it is. With a calculator, it's real easy to do. That's why it really helps to have more than one method to do it, to double check. I'll put a little bit more room here. And like I said, the one thing that's making this one tough is the fact that that mean is not a whole, I mean, it's it's not an exact value. You've got to round it off because that's a repeating decimal. All right. So then what's this going to be? So this is just, uh, I'm going to have to, I'm just going to leave and put the thing over here. So so that's negative 0 0.167. All right. I'm using this old calculator that uh, I used to use when I was in school, and I actually found it as an app. And it's HP, so I'm in an, and uh, I like using it much better than the TI. But they don't make it anymore because I think it confused too many people because it it works by a different kind of system. But anyway, but I still like it. Twenty one. So this is five. Okay. All right. So there's the values that we want right there. So if anybody else is uh, doing them by hand, then. Uh, let me know if you see anything fishy. Now, here's the drawback. Because of those things being um, rounded off, they're not going to add up exactly to zero because we rounded them off. But they will, should be fairly accurate.
Oh, this one's got to be negative here. I'm sorry. What's negative? Yeah, and then uh, they add up to more or less approximately zero. So there's our first checkpoint right there. All right, now we got to square each one of these. Now, uh, when you square these, um, they're going to be positive. And I'm part of this, I'm going to show you an object lesson because of the fact that this is very, very tough to do by hand. And then I'm going to show you how quick it is. I already did it on that um, TI actually on the screen. I'll show you. We're at 103 point. Oh, which one did I miss? Oh, I know which one is it. It's the one in the middle, the 3.833. Three, three. All right. Um, I got it on here. All right, anybody see any that doesn't look right? All right, now when I add these up, I get uh, the summation. Three thirty two point nine four six. All right. So now that's all of the tough stuff, really. I mean, that's the tedious part. So let's hopefully we did it. I did it right. So over here, I'm just going to do the calculate the final calculation. Hold on a second. All 
Oh, wait a minute. I did it on my phone one. That's, that's better than that one. I'll have to go back. And then there was six. Hold on a second. All right, so All right. That may be messed up, but I'm going to go ahead like I said it is. This is why this is so difficult, and this is why you know we want to use some kind of a technology. It's good to know the procedure, but all right, let me uh, show the calculator. I don't think it's right, so I'm going to go back and check it. And like I said, this that's why we got two different ways to do it. All right. So, all right, so just in case you haven't figured it out, the way you put in, put in the calculator, you hit stat, and then you hit enter, and then I'm going to put in the values. Well, let's see if I can clear all these out. That I don't know how to do, I don't think. In the world, do you clear it out? Hmm. I know there's a way to do it, but let me go do the uh, right. I tell you what, I'm gonna do it on the Excel for you real quick. And then I'll show you on the calculator. Because I know you people are dealing with both. But I gotta figure out how to clear that out. That's got an old num old numbers in it. All right, so the new problem had 15, 6, 19, 5, and 21. So we can find the mean real easy because we'll just put in average. So that part was right, okay? Now, this will also help me see where the s steps were, okay? Okay, so we're all those are the ones I had. Let's go back and 
look. So that's what they should have been. All right, now. Here I'm gonna put the squares. All right, so here we're going to have uh, the sum of, uh, so as I said, as you can kind of see here, if you do the sum of all of these, they should come up to zero, and that who we checked. You should be able to. If you can figure out how to do it on there, like I said, is. Uh, Hold on a second. So now, I'm just going to do it over here. And is that what I have? No, yeah, that's, well, no, it's not. Yeah, that's what I have. Okay. So, I was right up to that point. I was just looking at it on the calculator and it looked different. Okay, but that was because, uh, probably because I didn't clear out the array thing. Okay, so now we want to take that value and divide it by six. So the variance All right. I didn't for sure I, I had made a mistake, but it sure looks like it did it right. So seven point seven point. Four four eight. All right, so there we go. There's the variance. Uh, so if you wanted to, so, so the variance square, I mean the sigma square would be the fifty five point four seven two. So you see that with six of them, doing it by hand takes a lot of work. Okay, spreadsheet. I did it in like. A minute or two. Let me show you that back. I just went ahead and did it real quick on there. All right, so uh, the standard deviation, doing it kind of um, by hand, essentially, and double-checking my things because I did the exact same steps, um, 7.447968. And then this one is one where I just used the standard deviation function. So now I'm pretty confident. Yeah, that's exactly right. Now, that's not 7.4 because I think they say at least two decimal places, all right? Check what the instructions were. So that would be 7.45. Okay, you got to watch stuff like that. Let me see if I can find out how to uh, clear out that list. Every time I go back, I gotta figure out all these little things again. Yeah.
All right. Let me just look at this video here because I want to make sure you know do that. Um, Hold on one second. I haven't gone anywhere, so I want to just uh, show this. Because I don't know if they show you this in the PowerPoints and textbook or not, but you got to clear out that list. And so this is uh, one to do it. All right, so let me see if I can do it, and then uh, uh, how gets that? What this world will this guy do? All right. Why don't we take a break? <laughs> Uh, procedure and if you see something wrong just yell so I got 111 3 12s 13 and then 3 14s and then I'm going to show you um, a real simple way if you want to use it for this first test. It was something I was found when I was doing a little searching a minute ago.
249s. And I'm just going off of that one that I showed earlier. It's a longer one because I wanted to make sure you get the gist of how to do a large one. One of the drawbacks about this is uh, Yeah, they do tell you how many because there's. I don't notice it says L and then the parentheses it tells you what row you're at. So hopefully I got them all. And just so you know, in case you have not needed this yet and or have not figured it out, once you get them in there, you come back and you hit the stat and you go over to calc using the little toggle thing here. And then you're going to use that very first one. And like I said, the calculator is very easy once you get the data in, but getting the data in is the hard part. And uh, this was the same thing that I had on that uh, spreadsheet. I'll just go over... Um, to the next page and see so you've got um, n is equal to 30 so you know you got all of them 11 14 27.5 48 for the, the uh, core tails and the five number summary And so back to that Excel thing. So this is um, all those same things in, done in here. Like I said, you just kind of got to do them individually. Now there is a thing under data in my uh, uh, Excel expert out there. I forgot who it was. It was Anne Marie. Well, anyway, uh, like I said, for this first test, you can use anything you want. But um, there's also this thing under here underneath data called data analysis. It'll do all things for you. The only thing that it doesn't do is the, the quartile. So you got to still got to do Q1 and Q3 by yourself by yourself. But anyway, what last thing I wanted to show you on this is okay, let's copy all these 30 values. And there's another little site I like and I just found out I'm always looking at new things. And this one is about the um let's see. This one is called uh, calculator soup. I'll post it. I'll copy it and paste it in there in a second. But I wanted to uh, show you that site. It's called calculatorsoup.com. And uh, I already put it in there. Anyway, you start out with it blank like that. And then once you copied it, you can uh, paste it in there. And now you got to tell it which one, sample or population. This was a sample, as I remember. Now that's a good saying, teamwork makes the dream work. All right. So anyway, you hit calculate and look at all this neat stuff you get. You get uh, everything, and I'll show you. You know, I'll put this out there for you. 
you want to try that for your first test. Like I said, this is a neat way to do it. Uh, it didn't copy. I'm tasting the data. There's other ones too. This one I thought was kind of neat because it does. Pretty much, I've never seen one that does all of this. And uh, it's got the mid range in there. I don't see why you need that. But uh, they got the core teals, and that was the exact same ones we got on the. Uh, calculator and then also an Excel. And then this one is the intercortial range. Now, probably what we ought to do on our last, uh, you know, foray tonight is go through one of those and um, do the outliers because this one says it doesn't have any outliers. And as I remember, um, they wanted the quartiles, but yeah, it wasn't an outlier one. So we can go and find one in the homework and work on it. But see, it says outliers none. So this will tell you that. I'm just not 100% sure that it does it, that tells you the outliers the exact same way. Probably it does because they've got here interquartile range. So uh, do you all want to see? All right, what you got here? You got another one? Or is this the same one? Yeah, that's the one we just saw, isn't it? Yeah, and that's just a messy one if you're doing it by hand because there's a lot of big numbers in that one. All right, has anybody got anything else? If, I mean, if not, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find you... Um, one that we can do everything with. You know, including the outliers and all that. I mean, essentially, after you figure out, um, I mean, last time we did talk about the difference between Chevy Chev and uh, uh, empirical rules. So I'm hoping you understand that. If not, if not, you can ask, I'll go over Again, but I'm going to try to go over what the one problem that essentially causes you to have to do everything, which is the five number summary and the uh, outliers. So did Amy come in? I never did see it tonight. Let's see, Donna? I think I saw Donna. I don't see her now, but if I did see her. And also, uh, Camelia. I don't see. Okay. So let's uh, see if I can can find us uh, one where we do everything, and I'll do it by hand, and I'll show you on. Uh, the calculator and that other site too. Like I said once you got the Q1 and the Q3, you essentially and you essentially in the median you essentially got everything you need to do to do outliers. You just got to do a few calculations. I was just hoping to find one that actually had some outliers. That one that I had there didn't seem to have any. All right, let's see. Now, 
Now, you don't necessarily have to have all these, you don't necessarily have to calculate all these because sometimes they give you the important thing. Maybe that's what we should do first. Let's see. Uh, Come on, come on. It's taking its good time. Well, let me try to... Uh... There we go. All right, so this one... Um... Just going to ask it step by step, and then they give us three things there. So, what would the interquartile range be? And I'm just going to abbreviate it IQR. All right, and we had everything we needed, had, um, needed to do for that one that I just showed you um, that had 30 that I entered in the calculator and I put it into the calculator soup. And then uh, we also did it in Excel too. But um, in this case, it was 137 minus 97. All right, so, so you can see it, let's go, uh-oh. So, one thirty-seven minus ninety-seven. All right. So now we got to find the upper and lower boundaries. Let me go back over to the uh, board. All right. So the upper. So, and then the lower boundary. Is equal to. Q3 plus 1.5. IQR, which is 40. And then this one is. Q1 minus 1.5 IQR. So the IQR is 40. All right. When you multiply it times uh, 40, it's 60. So uh, hold on a second. Did they give us what we needed to know over there? Yeah. They're not asking us about outliers yet. So they said uh, 97 and 137. We got those. So just remember, the lower boundary is uh, 137 plus 60. And this is 37. I'm sorry. I should write it out.
All right, questions on this? Yeah, that's a nice little site. I guess it is. And uh, we're actually going, Delgado is slow to do it, but we're going towards more of an analysis type uh, class. And I, I think I told you I'll teach a class at another college and it's basically online. For, it's just for nurses, the specifically for nurses, the statistics class. And they mostly do just analysis. They don't do that many calculations because, you know, why would they need that Not so much? They have to understand it and how to use it. But so 97 minus 60 is 37. All right, so then we can put those in there and that problem. Seven and thirty-seven, and I'm going to move on to the next part. Oops, I had them backwards. Don't do that. All right. So let's go and then rebroadcast. And I calculated the upper boundary first and the lower boundary second. So when I put him in, I got an error that first time. So you can't do that. <laughs> but that's why they give you a couple of attempts to do it. All right. Now, a systolic blood pressure greater than 182 is considered high. Would blood pressure of 182 be an outlier? Answer that for me. Is it an outlier or not? We have enough information now here to figure that out. No, and why won't it, Raina? Why not? Because you can kind of think of it like this. And that's why we did that box plot. All right. Essentially, um, so we can kind of think of it as a line. Well, I'm a, it's a terrible line. So um, 37 would be right here. So 37. 197. So 180 is right in there. So what does that mean? If you had 200, then yeah, because that's greater than 197. If it was 30, lower than 37, yeah. Good, really good, Rain. that's good, because I wanted to make sure y'all got this idea. All right. So um, I think that's probably all they're gonna ask. Yeah, not an outlier. Hmm, let's see. I'm going to do this real quick, and I'm going to use uh, that site. Because like I said, the one bad thing about Excel for this five-number summary is you got to do the quartiles separately. So, um... I'm going to use that calculator soup site. But I'm going to download the data and copy and paste it. All right. So just kind of show you if you haven't figured that out about using that. If you press this down 
right there. It'll come down into a file on your computer. And if you got Excel, when you double click on it, uh, it'll open up in Excel. If not, then what you can do, if you don't have Excel, you can upload that file to your Google account. Now you gotta have a Google account in order to get access, it's free, but you can uh, open it up and it'll open up in their spreadsheet, which is called um, Sheets, all right? But uh, once you do that, you can copy it and paste it. Now watch, watch what I'm gonna do. I, I just copied it inside of here. And let's just see if we can do it quick like using the site that I just showed you. What have we got? All right. Does it say anything about it being a population? So I just pasted it in there. So this is a sample. I don't know if it really matters because we're not. All right, so we got uh, the minimum, we got the maximum. So um, that's everything we need. So I'm gonna take that and, and put that in over here while you're watching. All right, but just knowing where I got it at and you see how quick it was. All right, so the first quartile was and I'm taking it from this. And you can do these by hand too. I just don't it takes a little bit of time. As uh, if you want to do them by hand, I can show you real quick, but I can also show you um you know, we did this in last uh, last class. So um, 30, all right, worked. The median was 19. And now we do the upper and lower boundaries. Now I'm gonna go back over there now, we need to have that interquartile range. So uh, I'm going to do that on the board. So make sure that's what it was. Yeah. So then that's uh, 17, right? So we'll check it. Sometimes I'll do calculations in my head. I'll do them real quick. And I'll make a little bit of a mistake. So 17. Now, instead of... Um, Doing it twice, I'm just going to do 1.5 IQR. Is equal to 1.5 times 17. So 25.5. So that's the number we're going to add and subtract. So, um, the lower boundary, we'll just call it LB. You can also say lower outliner boundary, lob, is 13 minus 25.5. The UOB is uh, 30 plus.
So now this one is negative. Now, what that is essentially going to mean is if we don't have any negative values, then there are no outliers on that side. This data thing is kind of blind and that it doesn't know what the makeup of your data is. So it's just using these values for reference. It doesn't know you don't, you don't have any points that are negative, but uh, that means that as long as all the points are positive, then we're going to be all right. So 55.5, and I need to double check that because I'm fast here. Thirty-five point five. So now the boundaries are, like I said, is you can kind of think of it like this. So zero will probably be in here somewhere. So let's just say for perspective, zero, negative twelve. All right, so I'm just going to have that, and let's go back to the problem. All right, so uh, what was it? It was negative 12, right? Oops. 12.5 and 55.5, okay. Okay, are there any outliers? Now, here's where we gotta look. Thankfully, they've already got these sorted for us, so we don't even need to go back. So, uh, since all of them are positive, there are no outliers on the downward side, see? Because the minimum piece of data was zero. But on the upper side, remember, the top side was 55.5. So what we've got are these two folks here, 86, because 48 is below 55.5, and those other two are above. So. Uh, what are they? 86 and 116. I don't know if they want us to use their little thing. Okay. All right, any questions about any of that or? Uh, I mean, like I said, it probably take you a little bit longer, but uh, if you, especially if you're doing that by hand, because I was trying to uh, um, make it go a little bit faster by using some technology on all those values, because that was, uh, how many was that? That was, looks like that was 30 pieces of data. And like I said, that's large, considered large is when you get 30 or more. Probably do this last one. All right. The good thing about this one is um, they give us everything we need here. How do you do this thing? They changed this recently, and it's a lot better than it used to be. You know what? I don't think I've ever done the box plot with this. Oh, okay. Okay, so the median is 20. Oh, I see it here. Oh, 
13, and then this one is 34. All right. So see how that works? They, I don't know why we need the data to go to Excel for this, because we can see it, because they're calculating all the main things for us. All right. So the median is 20. Oops. We were, yeah, the median is 20. The uh, Q1 is 30. And then uh, Q, oops. What did I mess up here? Ah. Uh, so that's the median again. This is kind of neat, actually. And that was right. So now what we got to do is uh, do the outlier thing. So uh, I'm going to do it on the calculator. So I'm not going to write down just for time's sake. So 34 minus uh, 13 is 21. 21 times 1.5 is 31.5. So now so that means then uh, it's on the left side it's a uh, negative 18.5 so we don't have to worry about any outliers on that side just like that other one now 34 plus let's see 21 1.5 plus 34 so that's 65.5 all right so this is going to go all the way down to one Oops. Because that's the smallest piece of data. There's no outliers on that sign. Why can't I get it to work there? There we go. Ah, had it. All right. Now. So this one got moved. It was 13. All right. And this one got moved. And that one's still right. Okay, now on the other side, as I said, the upper boundary is 65.5. So that means everything from here on up is an outlier. So we're going to go to 56 on this because that's the highest one that's not an outlier. Now, let me just double check that that was right. So it's 34, 13 minus gives us 21. Multiply it times 1.5. So uh, 31.5 added to 34. So 65.5 again, so the double checked. So all these five are outliers. So now there's some way to put in the outliers. Let's see if this is it. So 72. Yep. 75, 93, 95, 112. That's your box plot for that data. And you really didn't even to download that data on this one. You just, because they gave you the, uh, the impertinent information, all the calculations, the, Q, the median, the Q1, and the Q3. All right, any last uh, questions about this?
All right. So, um, so this is the last class before that test. Is everybody cool on that? Uh, good. I mean, because, um, like I said, tomorrow is the, uh, I've got a class at, you know, be finished about two and then I'll be, I'll check my email. So if you got questions, shoot them. If you got any concerns or anything, I generally don't mess with the email during that weekend. So this test is going to be closing on the 20th. So I would suggest going in there as soon as you can. This day was the first day it was open and taking one of those, uh, take it one time, just have a feel for it. And then you can come back and do it again and get your higher grade. You're not going to have to do everything that's in all of the homework. That's why I gave you the sheet here to kind of, you know, whittle it down. Okay. And I did an explanation of the things that were more theoretical. And then, uh, like I said, we've done all these other things in the process of what we're doing tonight. I mean, we talked about the empirical and Chevy-Chev last time when we reviewed. We did the Z scores. We did the five number summary. And we did all of these here. All right. Well, if you don't have any questions today, let me know. Like I said, let me know before, like, end of the day on, on, on Thursday, because, like I said, I don't check my email generally on that uh, weekend because the school is closed, and so I'm going to be closed. But I've, I got that test ended on the weekend. So let me know if you got questions, all right, or concerns. Don't feel bad about asking me anything. All right, it's just that I'm giving you extra time on this so there's not a whole lot of wiggle room because then we got to come in and hit chapter four and five before the end of the month and also do the testing. So, all right. 